Hello everyone. I'm Radha Manga from Pure Storage. I'm responsible for FlashBlade solutions. I'm joined here by Dave Russell from Veeam. Dave, what do you do for Veeam? Well, Radha, at Veeam Software, I'm Vice President of Enterprise Strategy, which really means I'm charged with taking Veeam into the largest of large accounts. Today we are going to talk about Pure Storage integration with Veeam. But before we go there, Dave, I would like you to give our users a quick rundown of how the backup industry evolved. Yeah, if you think about the different eras, just simplistically, Radha, there's kind of two ways to frame this. For easily 30 plus years, arguably maybe closer to 40 or 50 years, we were really constrained with the notion of data capture. So these eras, long, long, long time, really struggling with how do we get data into the backup system? How do we ingest that data? And we talked about that oftentimes. We expressed that in terms of the backup window, yep. which just meant you know, the time frame that we had when production systems might be quiet enough to be able to go and try to pull all that data. But the issue was it could take a long amount of time to do that, maybe from midnight to 6 a.m. or even earlier at night to even later in the morning. Mm -hmm. And what we're really trying to do is go from disk to some kind of backup repository and pull all of that over. And then what we started to see much, much more recently, so we've been struggling with that for a long period of time. And as an industry, we made some good improvements. We came up with backup software to instrument all of this and coordinate this and to do things like application consistency. Yeah. And so that's positive. And we introduced more disk into this equation where the target may increasingly be disk for where we're going to write the data to, but that was still just a capture notion. And the game changer started to be with virtualization, server virtualization and more fast access now, how could we go take something that was really an insurance policy that we really didn't have to cache very often, meaning it's a three to 5% kind of time frame we were pulling back any of the data or doing a restore on it. But what we wanna do now is transform and transcend really into the data access era. And what this is doing is really the opposite. This is now saying we want to take our repository, which could be on disk, and pull it back to a production environment so we can get value out of that. Really what we're doing is moving from an era of protection, which has value, but was oftentimes just fairly restricted in terms of how frequently we got access to that data and to now a time frame that's really about not just protecting the business but enabling the business and what we've done now we've come into another time problem where first it was tough to get the data in but we rarely had to pull it back out now with data access on a very frequent basis we're wanting to pull up multiple virtual machines mm where we maybe three, five percent of the time we'll pull the data back in historical availability. Maybe now we're really talking about taking many, many terabytes and doing this on a daily basis to be able to try to think of new use cases outside of availability. And we'll talk about some sure. of those as we go. That's wonderful. Actually, if you were to add some more comments on your data access, if you were to believe the Economist article from 2015, Data is your new oil, right? Data is the most valuable asset in your data center, and people are actually finding more and more insights from that data. So the restore speeds have become even more critical a requirement for users. That's right, that's right. And what we've seen now, we talked a little bit about kind of the infrastructure constraint we had here. Now we've flipped it to now we have a whole new set of infrastructure constraints that are making some things challenging for us to get that speed on a now on-demand basis. Yeah. To realize this new data access requirement, what we recommend to our customers is to implement something what we refer to as data hub. Because have your data in pure storage data hub, and you can actually use it for every purpose you, you need you have. So let's quickly look at how a typical data center is. Um, a typical data center runs their crown jewel applications like Oracle databases, SQL databases, or some other OLTP kind of applications, right? They all also run on a tr uh, some traditional block array like a flash array, which mm -hmm. is highly performant and latency is the key. And oftentimes 
people actually back up the data and uh, they used to create another silo uh, where they were actually using it for test and dev reasons because the software development has become a very critical function. And um, the sooner you can actually develop the software, changes your time to market equation. Mm -hmm. So they had another storage array uh, just to maintain software dev, right? So lately there is another trend where people would like to look at the data that they have backed up and there are a lot many initiatives like analytic initiatives, right? Analytics. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there is also another th trend we can see where people are actually leveraging AI and machine learning initiatives. Right? But don't forget about that fundamental use case. People always need some storage to back up their data, not just from the primary areas, but from various sources they might have in their data center. Right, right? good point, like a number of virtual machines. Virtual machines, yeah. So what we actually recommend at Pure is you can replace all these silos of storage just with one uh, product, which is massively scalable with multidimensional performance called FlashBlade. Blade in its smallest form factor can start at just seven blades, giving you around 123 terabytes of capacity and scale all the way to 75 blades and each blade can be 52 terabytes in size. Now you can imagine the massive capacity you can actually get in just half a rack form factor. It not only gives you capacity, every time you add another blade into the system, you're also growing the performance of it linearly, right? So we have done wonderful integration with both Flash Array and Flash Blade with Veeam software. Mm -hmm. I would like you to spend some time on what kind of integrations we have uniquely done and what kind of value it brings to the customers. Yeah, sure, Rada. So you know, your notion here of horizontally encompassing more workloads and being able to offer radically um, high performance, not in, in, on the ingest, but even higher performance surfacing this out. So what we can think of Veeam software exploiting and coming across horizontally in a software plane, we can think of a few different use cases and capabilities. Well, the first might be we can go in and interact with Flash Array and instrument a Flash Array snapshot, yep. and then move that in to the Flash Blade repository. Now from there, we can start to think about, hmm, maybe we need to move now a copy of this to some external system. Maybe we need to go offsite. Yep. Right, so if we have a flash blade that's over in another city. So I'll call this flash blade two. So basically you you can leverage the replication capabilities of Veeam software to do it. That's right. right, that's right. We've captured data over here. We've moved it now into flash blade one, let's say, and we can go to flash blade two, or maybe we want to do something like take this out to the cloud. Or even to physical tape. You know, physical tape still has a use case to play and was a low-cost medium for secondary storage, that might be attractive for some. But one that I'm really excited about, and this gets more to the data access we've been talking about, and your notion on that Economist article, is being able to support this DevOps and DevSecOps and Dev tests, and but anything that wants to surface up mm -hmm. copies of virtual machines for a business process. At Veeam, we call that data labs, and it's just a feature that's embedded inside of our, our Veeam offering that allows us to near instantly mount anywhere from one to potentially 100 or more virtual machines in support of a business activity. And DevOps is a perfect example of that, where we might wanna be able to get fresh development uh, data or fresh test data, and we can expand use cases off of there. You can imagine security, yep. where we might wanna test a buffer overflow kind of a concern. Or you can imagine forensics, where you're actually looking for details within data and you don't want to harm production systems. So we now we, we're really talking about different personas. We've, we've been very storage oriented and backup administrator, but now we've got application developers and compliance people involved as well. And one last piece that's worth pointing out in terms of integrating all of this is Veeam has a component called Veeam Availability Orchestrator. And I'll just abbreviate it there. And that's just simply a scheduling solution mm -hmm. initially created uh, for handling a business continuity disaster recovery notion of bringing back these virtual machines. We have easy to stitch workflows. We can configure networking and other things. But you can imagine a scenario of this automation where we can instrument 
flash array snapshots, invest, ingest them into Flash Blade, and then surface them up. Maybe nine o'clock on a Monday morning, we want to bring 20 specific instances back to support a DevOps effort that's taking place. Wow. And do this all in an integrated fashion and not be hard bound by some of the existing architectures that are in the market. Okay. Not only that, I think once you have your data here, um, some, some features we are even beyond Veeam. For example, I want to throw a Spark cluster at it, like an mm -hmm. elastic cluster, and FlashBlade would support it. Or even I want to bring some GPUs into the equation and actually start looking at the data and build some models based on the and learning models, right? All those are supported, but naturally the question would be, FlashBlade, if it is consolidating so many workloads, does it really have all the performance you need? Just to give you some numbers, on the backup world, as people understand terabytes per hour, a single 4U form factor FlashBlade can actually back data at 15 terabytes per hour, and it linearly scales with more and more blades. Mm. More than that, to support your data access requirements of the modern era, you, you can actually do almost like three and a half times the restore. This is the key for our uh, actually use case here, which is why we call it rapid restore, right? The, so by combining a multi-dimensional scalable product like FlashBlade with the advanced capabilities of Veeam, customers can actually leverage the, the best of both worlds. Right? And what I like about what you said is that you know, this could change over time, mm -hmm. right? It's future-proofing an organization so that as different workloads and different processes come in and out of play, and maybe data gets migrated into other locations, we've got then also the ability to take just one software layer and one infrastructure layer and grow dynamically with that. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things about FlashBlade is it's able to take in data so rapidly. So with Veeam, we can just spin up more and more proxy agents to pull data into this environment. And then we get into the access piece of this amazing three and a half times restore rate or access mount rate and get real business value. Going back to that economist notion of yeah. do something to drive the business forward from a protection state to enablement state. So oftentimes, what you just quoted is right, because the, the, the disaggregated nature of storage and compute allows people to basically scale these architectures. Oftentimes, we get this question, hey, how is this solution uh, differentiated from these uh, appliance-based offerings out there today? What is your take on it? Well, you know, appliance as a form factor delivery model is, is very convenient, uh, especially on day one. The challenge can be some of the appliances are fairly fixed in their function. Yep. And, and what I mean by that is that everything is hard coupled from the software stack to all the individual components of the infrastructure, mm -hmm. you know, the compute side, the memory, the overall capacity. And so some of these workloads that we're describing right here, but even from a backup perspective, you might run into situations as you grow where you just need more capacity, not necessarily more compute. Yep. Or the opposite, uh, where we need a lot more compute, we want to spin up a lot of instances of uh, our Veeam proxy servers to pull in a bunch of data. And that story, that configuration changes over time. What we've got here with the marriage of Veeam and then Pure Storage FlashBlade is the ability to have single solutions, but that are extensible, exactly. that aren't hardwired. That's great. Thanks, Dave, for actually joining and explaining our users our joint value proposition. Thanks, everyone, for joining our session. Thank you, Rada, and thanks for watching.